Researchers say they are seeing an uptick in mental health crises in communities of color, an issue that has plagued them well before the pandemic. Dr. John Huber, clinical forensic psychologist and CEO of Tripsitter Inc. Clinic, is here to talk more about these findings. Welcome to BNC. Dr. Huber, let's start with these studies that have shown that suicide was an ongoing crisis for black and brown communities long before the pandemic. Why is that? Well, you, you have this whole situation with teenagers who really, you know, they said it in a minute ago, they really don't know who they are yet. And then they're faced with normal, what we call normal, but it's traumatic for a lot of these kids having to go in there and establish their identity, maintain some sort of peer relationship, try to try to have some kind of value and self-esteem in everything. And then they, you know, they struggle every day and they don't know who they are. It's, it's one of the biggest conundrums we have. We expect them to be independent and stand up and speak for themselves. And they're still trying to figure out, you know, why and who and what they're doing with their world. It's a very troubling time actually for a lot of teenagers. And how has the pandemic made things worse? Well, we know that behavior changes your brain chemistry, just like we can change brain chemistry and it changes our behavior. And one of the things we do as therapists is try to get kids and anybody actually suffering from depression or anxiety to stop doing the behaviors that reinforce that brain chemistry. And that includes isolating yourself, staying indoors, not going outside, you know, not interacting with friends and family and basically withdrawing from society. Now they're being told they have to do this. They're being told they can't go to school, that they can't play in their sports teams. All the things that they're trying to do to establish this, themselves as an individual, they're being told not to do it. So if they were on the edge before, it turns out that doing those behaviors actually takes them over the edge and they become uh, full-blown you know, depressed and anxious and their, their world goes into a spiral right down you know, towards more and more depression and there's not much they feel like they have control over that can help that. Are minority communities getting more access to mental health services? Yes and, and no. And what I mean by that is there's not a large plethora of uh, minority people in mental health services. So when they finally do get in that door, they don't feel like they can connect. And it may take you longer to connect with, with a, a therapist who doesn't you know, know where you come from and doesn't know your traditions and things like that. It can happen. It just takes much more time. And that's why, you know, it, you know, one of the reasons why I started TripSitter.Clinic is we have an access. There's this new medication. It's not really new, but we use it differently, and we can help break some of those barriers that way and lower some of our natural defense mechanisms so a therapist can help you and and, and make a turn. And uh, that that's that's what we're out here trying to do is help everyone. We don't want people to spiral. Uh, it is not good for us as a society. And unfortunately right now, you know, teenage girls between the ages of 10 and 14 are one of the highest rates of suicides in this country across the board, regardless of ethnicity. Dr. Huber, do you have any tips for people to help them out to try to deal with what the situation that we're all facing? Well, as parents and friends, you know, I try to encourage people to pay attention to, to our kids. If they start talking about what it would be like if they're not there, don't blow it off. Actually invite discussion with that. You know, they've been thinking about this for a long time before they bring it up to you. So you're not going to show them anything new or teach them a new process or maybe give them ideas. They've already been there and they've done that. Don't be judgmental because that's why they're there. They've already gotten judgmental and they're ready to back away and just throw in the towel. So don't be judgmental. Listen to their story. Let them tell their story. It's very important. A lot of our kids now, especially now that they're not in schools, they don't feel like they have a place where they're heard. So mom, dad, brother, sisters, your neighbors, anybody that they're actually safely in contact with right now need to pay attention. And when they start talking, listen. It's probably one of the best things you can do for any of our kids. When do you know if it's serious enough where you need to seek professional help, somebody such as yourself? Well, if they're actually making discussion about ending their life, you need to seek professional help. Uh, the process 
is, you know, not an exciting one. You shouldn't be, oh, my gosh, and go into a panic mode because then they're going to panic. Be more casual about that. Hey, I think you should talk to somebody. And I would start with, even though your schools may not be seeing children, their counselors are still online and they're still there. Start with your school counselors. They know what is normal for teenage kids. And if your child or someone you know is an adolescent or teen comes out and says they are they're want to kill themselves right now, don't even hesitate. Take them to an emergency room. I know it's it's a long line, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. The other thing you can do is in a lot of cases, our, our local police have mental health uh, training, and they can come and evaluate and make a decision for you, too. I know our police departments are already overly burdened, and there's a big trust issue with a lot of us. But the reality of it is, if your child's at risk, you need to take action, even if it scares you to do that. But stay calm and stay goal-directed, and your kids will, will stand up to it. They're resilient. We just got to give them a chance. Absolutely. Dr. Hubert, thank you so much for joining us with that very important advice. Take care.